This week on eFix TV, we're going to be talking a lot of hot air. No, we don't mean another April Fool's. Hopefully we've got that out of the way at the weekend. We're going to be talking hot air. We're going to be talking smelly air, stale air, a little bit like the atmosphere that we have in here on a Thursday morning after a trip down to Mastabs. But in all seriousness, it's all about heat and ventilation in the press recently because obviously people have died because ventilation has been done badly or not at all. So we're going to take a deep dive into the world of ventilation, some of the things that electricians should and shouldn't do with our fantastic guests from Environment. So let's see what they've been up to. So something stinks and why do we get ventilation wrong as installers? We'll come back to what stinks about us and little schoolboy antics later on in the show. But thank you ever so much for joining us live on live stream, live on live stream. That's, we'll have to go again with that. Live on YouTube, live on streaming. Facebook. Yeah, on oh, Facebook as well, our friends on Facebook. Hit. Okay. Yep, yeah. yep, on Facebook as well, we're live. So thank you very much for joining us and your comments are really important to us, especially if you want to get into the register. So make sure you leave those comments. However, you might be getting us on catch up and those comments help drive future content. So please make sure you leave them as well and we'll get back to as many of those comments as we can, won't we, Gordon? Certainly will. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, hold on, well, as well, if you are tuning in live and you're a regular viewer, hang around to the end to make sure if you're in the credits. Yes, we've added some new face into credits and we apologise for last time. We got cut off abruptly before the end. I think a lot of people were very frustrated that the credits didn't come up. It was beyond our control again. So we'll just keep rolling through as we go. We've got some great guests from the Envira event today, haven't we? So we've got yeah. uh, those in the house. We'll show the green room in a moment. But before we do that, let's thank the people that managed to keep the lights on here at Lionside Studios. We'd like to thank the sponsors of our live stream. We'd like to thank the Laseco Group, Marshall Tuflex, Doncaster Cables, and the wonderful people down in Braintree with the Luden Palazzoli Group. Yeah, and I'd especially like to thank Doncaster Cables this week because they've had a challenging week, Gary. They've had a few, uh, yeah, a few extra phone calls through to their help desk. I think they'd had four by nine o'clock on Monday morning. And what was the scallywag behind that? Well, we'll come into that little bit. Let's just have a look at our guests in the green room, Rick. We'll just have a little, uh, let's see where they are. Oh, Ooh, there we go. We got, oh, Lightning Larry there on the far right. We've got uh, Dynamite Dave. And in the middle, we've got someone we like to call Alan. Alan, who eats all the biscuits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the entire biscuits, Alan, we call him, yeah. So so he's got his own nickname well, they'll there. They'll be coming in soon. Yeah, they will. So we've got a little preamble out of the way, but yeah, it's been a big week actually, hasn't it? It has been a big week. We started on uh, on Saturday. We started on Saturday this week, didn't we? Yeah. 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 Well, we ended on Saturday. Let's we'll put it that way. Well, we, uh, yeah. the little, apparently, there was a video going around that there was a new cable. A new cable? Were yeah. we the first to know about this new cable? That would be interesting if we were. Yeah. But uh, obviously the video was packed full of clues that in fact it was an April Fool. It was an April Fool's, yeah. And, so uh, give us an example of a clue. Uh, well, you hammered a back box to the wall with a cable clip. I did. Using... Ken's hammer. Ken's hammer. And this is a bricklayer's hammer. Yeah, it is. It's fantastic for, um, for sort of chopping bricks in half. Yeah, shaping like bricks. Yeah. And, and also now apparently you can fix back boxes to the wall with it. Absolutely, so as long as you've got the appropriate clip. size cable clip. So that was one clue. Uh, obviously we did suggest that we're bringing middle and insulated cable back up in Scotland as the standard for home uh, rewires. Yes, absolutely. Fact, the Scottish things are different. I'm sure we'll touch on that a little bit later in the show as well. Yeah, but it was packed full of stuff. Yeah, packed full of and stuff. And you called think the earth wire. Well, most of my friends contacted me when I was asleep on uh, Saturday morning. The wonderful Marcus did. Uh, and he ran me up and he said, I knew straight away that it was a foot because you would never call it the earth wire. And I said, in takes one and two, I couldn't get out of the habit and still called it the circuit protective conductor. Yeah, I did. Yeah, we had a few takes on that one. We, we did. Couldn't get it out. So we kicked that out of you and we managed to get that out. Thank you for everyone who joined in in the comments in that. Obviously, most people did realise it was an April Fool. And uh, yeah, you need to question yourself if you didn't really, but uh, okay, I'll perhaps watch videos very closely on the 1st of April. Yes, we, we, that's our third, uh, third out and only two of them alive because we had to pull one of them down with a massive apology and we've been there many a times, but that one obviously makes it the third in the set. So look out for what epic adventure we might have on April the 1st in 2024. So that should be a good moment, shouldn't yeah. it? And the other thing we announced last week was the winners of our eFix Awards and we had a glittering presentation on we did. YouTube for that one. Seamless, I would suggest anyone who watched that must have thought how slick that presentation went. And, and you know, I might have been quiet in there, but I'm obviously the sole silent star of the presentations. You know, Joe's all right with those silky words, but when I chip in, effortless, zero mistakes. Yeah, well, with that in mind, I think we'll just have a little look at uh, court uh, off camera, because that might, might just bring back one. some memories for, the, yeah, for, for a 20 minute video. It took us a long time, Gary. Here at eFix, we produce a ton of content every week. And while it may look really good when it finally gets out to the channels, behind the scenes, it's often a whole different story. 
It's my job as editor to get the raw footage and turn it into the end product. But the team really doesn't make it that easy. From missing out words to creating whole new words that don't even exist. Let's have a look what happened this week. Now we've had a very busy few weeks here at eFix. We've had the eFix Awards and we've been to Dublin to visit Robus. But let's start with the eFix Awards, shall we? So Gary and Joe filmed a video about a week and a half ago. And the video was an hour and a half long. As you can imagine, plenty of moments were caught off camera. Isn't that right, Joe? Got like a whole year's worth of caught off camera in this. Uh, mm. we're, having a, we're, having a, we're having a special next time. Now, if you were filming a one and a half hour video, would you try and be as efficient as possible? You'd have it all ready and scripted. Did you do that, Gary? Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm a bit just, nervous. Just, just relax and be yourself. But not too much yourself. <laughs> after Gary was briefed with how to do the awards, after those encouraging words from Joe, they started to read out the winners. Now you'd think that after researching these winners meticulously over the past couple of months, they'd know their names by now. But that wasn't quite the case, was it, Gary? Who's taking the award home tonight, Gary? It's going to be... Oh, I've, got it on, I've got it on there. It's WFP Fire and Security... No, Fire, Security and Electrical. Sorry, man. Fire, Security and Electrical. No, 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 no. It's WFP Fire, Security and Electrical. Well, you got there in the end, Gary, and that's all that matters. At least Joe's not having any trouble when it comes to reading out the names. Excellent work there from WFP. <clears throat> Sorry. Excellent work there. Oh, no. Excellent work there from WFP. I nearly gave up when I had to edit that, with all the going backwards and forwards constantly. Now, if you watched the awards video, you'll have seen that there was a winner that had a very similar name to Efix. And I think this sort of threw Gary and Joe off a bit. Just watch this next clip. It is Epix. Yeah, so Epix. Yeah, epics. Epics. Yeah. Epics. Yeah. Yeah. Epics. Yeah. <clears throat> Chuck another Radley about you. So what, before Epics? Not after Epics. Okay, that's so fine. Epics first. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was Epics. 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 Oh, right, okay. Sorry, mate. Epics. 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 Yeah? Yeah. You're doing well, mate. Come on. Yeah, we're nearly there. We are nearly there. I was <clears> It was Epics. Is, that, is it my ears? Am I? It, sounds, it still sounds like Epex. <laughs> Joey's just sitting there like, I can't believe I've got to edit this. <laughs> Incorrect, Joe. I was actually really looking forward to editing the video because I knew that I'd get clips like this for caught off camera. Now, the other week, me, Gordon and Joe went to Dublin to visit Robus. And while we were there, we went to visit a local wholesaler. Turns out it was very different from the UK. They had a range of different games you could play, including darts, pool and even golf. Let's see how Gordon got on when he had a go. <laughs> I'll have a go. Oh, this will be. Camera never lies. Does anyone do any work over here? Is it so? No. Here's a go. Go that, Joe. No, 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 no. You're on camera now. You can't do that. So, if you, if you want, we can start off with a game of pool to see if you're better at pool than you are at darts. I don't think Gordon could make it as a professional sportsman, even though he did get three hole in ones. Now, you may have watched that April Fool's video last week. Did you know it was an April Fool's before the end? Let me know in the comments. But you might be wondering where we got the cable from. And that's right, we did get it from Dublin, from the same wholesaler that you saw in that last clip. Let's have a look at Gordon picking it up. I need to get a couple of off-cuts of this, because this is me, uh, me, <laughs> me April Fool <laughs> for our UK viewers. <laughs> Fantastic work there from Joe. I think we both took a, a little bit of a, yeah, a tanning on that one. Probably rightly deserved after what we did on Saturday. Which yeah, was... no, no, that no, was good fun. And, and anyone who'd been watching on social media might have known I was in Ireland and obviously would have known it was Irish cable. That They've got that the, cable uh, in Ireland that we said that they were having that. What are the chances? What are the chances when you're there? Well, we're going to bring our guests in next. We're going to see Lightning Larry and Dynamite Dave, and that links in lovely to when we see them on the race hall, which won't be long. But let's bring them in so we can have this conversation around the world of ventilation. You stay there, Alan. You're doing nothing this evening. <laughs> Come on in, boys. <laughs> oh, he's took the Ooh, premier seat there. there. Oh, he's, he's, he's already he's done you again. <laughs> <laughs> again? Yeah, I'll yeah. let him in. Uh, yeah. So we've got our guests, uh, Larry Soper and David Nichols. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. So, right, right. I guess we always like to start off, obviously, we get a bit of background about the guests. So I guess we'll go with, uh, who's the non-dart player tonight? No, we'll go with David. You've got yeah. 60 seconds to tell us uh, a little bit about your background and what you're up to. And, you, and as you're a salesperson, it's only 60 oh. seconds. Yeah. Only 60 seconds, right. Okay, so um, David Nichols, I've been uh, with Envirovet for nearly seven years. Um, but my history in ventilation goes back to the mid-90s. 
Um, I've probably done about 25 years in sales, um, selling ventilation, so I think I've seen most forms of ventilation fitted badly or, or not. Um, my current role is heavily into the specification marketplace, which is more of some of the systems that we'll talk about during the, uh, you know, in, in, the in the next evening. Um, I've worked through various uh, stages, but my, my, my the bit I like the most is going on to sites and talking to contractors and making sure that things are fitted correctly. Um, that's the bit I get the biggest buzz out of. Okay, and we'll find out. And Larry, over yes. to you. Um, I've been in uh, Vivent for nearly 10 years now. Uh, technical services manager, so I head up our um, systems design team, technical support team. I also do a lot of the training that Environment do for contractors, um, which is an ICIC based course. Just got a plug in there for them. Um, but yeah, it's uh, again, like Dave, uh, do some site visits, look at some of the, the uh, poor installs and the issues we get with ventilation as well. Poor installs. <laughs> That's probably one of the best segues we've ever had there. <laughs> Lightning Larry. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go in, aren't we? We're gonna need a, a little bit of your intro to the next yes, section. Yes, well, aren't we? I mean we're always like to find out if our guests yeah, where to sit on the skill level, really, you know, mm. uh, what the electrical background's like. Obviously, ventilation's easy because it's big pipes. Hard to get that wrong, isn't and it? And go between two places, tie wraps, yeah, things like double. that. Yeah. You've got flexible duct, and if you, if you do it, it wrong. Just ram bends. So it's obviously time for our electrician's challenge, and that means you get a chance to join in because you get to guess the time that our guest did it in. Now, to win a prize, and we will catch up on the prizes, we'll get back to the post later, you have to guess who is the fastest. Or is it David or is it Larry? And as a tiebreaker, what time did they do them in? So it's a... So for all the banter we've had, yeah, for all the banter we've had, we don't know whether you know, Dynamite Dave or Lightning Larry is going to be first. And it's the old classic, isn't it? We've got the non-dart player over here. Okay, and we've got the fully-fledged electrical background, electrician, teacher, and all those things that put you in the highest echelons when it comes to the race war. And we've had some fun <coughs> today with it. We should have our 60 seconds countdown now. Is that correct? Yes, we'll try to get the So back. let's get the we'll 60 seconds order. countdown yes. in. So guess the time. So is it Larry in three weeks? 72 hours or is it David in seven minutes and 21 now it could be hoodwinking you there as we all do if it is you just put Larry three weeks David three minutes but, uh, so you were background you electrician originally uh, no I'm not an electrician but I'm qualified um, no I'm not. So you're qualified as well <clears throat> yes. You're qualified as well? <laughs> yes, I'm qualified. As what? Well, I don't do it as a job, as an electrician. There you go, so you're an electrician, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> well, you sort of did the course and never practised it? Or? Yeah, I never practised it. Never? Well, I've, never. I've still done the course recently as well, so right. keep up to date with all the... All right, 18th regs, of course. Uh, yeah, 18th, um, oh, inspection and testing, so... Yeah, right. just, yeah. just a little bit. Yeah, we, we, yeah, inspection and testing, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Well, we, don't even, we haven't even seen the race, we're, we're, we're giving no, we it's the first time we've seen it. Flip and banter, but we're yeah. going to see this live as well. So we're going to commentate on your race rules, hopefully. Okay, that's fine, so just move it up. I'll, I'll do it, so while we're doing that, so wait for the time. You've got to talk to the audience, remember? Okay. So um, as so we're going through. That, you get to look at Gary's back. Yes, yeah. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> Agile I was, so we're sorry about the scratching. So we're back on then, so here we go then. So we should be rolling straight in, are we, to the race walls? No, it's no better. No better. Okay, we'll sort that out when the, the race walls are on. Perhaps we can give a spare mic. Okay. Here we go. So we're off and running. I don't know who's first. Is it Lightning Larry? Oh, a no, non-dark no, player. Oh. Okay. Here we go then. So we're, we're, we're pretty slick, aren't we, in here? I was, uh, was uh, privy to seeing it. I didn't see the times on the board, but I was pretty privy to seeing this. So well, uh, Silver Fox, I think, jumped to mind when you were doing this one day. So uh, yeah, slow and steady may win the race, often doesn't. A bit of DIY at home? Yeah, I try to, yeah. 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 I've been known to dabble a few times. Yeah. You're on electric. Always a dabbler. Oh, we love a dabbler. Yeah, I, I dabble. Oh, we, 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 we're allowed to. Just Our audience yeah. love that. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, just, oh. Do you see that, Larry? Went straight up the conduit first time. That's yeah, I always yeah. have trouble with that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, we, we noticed it. So, uh, yeah, here we go then. So, into the uh, Lude and Consumer Unit. So we've got our A type RCD protection in there. We're fully uh, up to the latest regulations. Quite a lot of concentration there on your face, Dave. Just a bit. Up and down as well, helping the old knees. So here we go. So three connections with our consumer unit. You like the wire strippers that we gave you from Wago? Yeah, they're pretty good, aren't they, for the uh, for the non-dart player. It's like having a having a helping hand as you leave it from your hand as it hits the board and the flight. Look at that. Yes, Looking fantastic. pretty good. Yeah, it, it was. It was good. Yeah. Like I said, the silver fox. 
you, you decided to go with the glasses. Why was that? Because um, I could see that. Yes, mm. yes. Larry, Larry's one of those sort of yeah. dart players that changes their darts halfway through the leg. Yeah. You know, so it, one minute he had the glasses on and was complaining he couldn't see anything. Then he didn't have any glasses on and complained he couldn't see anything. So I wonder which one of your legs is going to come up with the uh, the winning time for you. Probably the one without the glasses. Yeah, we'll see, won't we? So uh, here we go. So fly lid on the back of the box right. and some connections in a socket outlet and we're done. OK, so we've got Alan Russell in around as well in the background trying to get in. It's amazing, these. but did you know there was a handle on that screwdriver, Dave? Uh, yes. Yeah, did you, did you know? It's, it's at the other end. It's cheating, yeah, cheating, that. Yeah, yeah, cheating. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing how many people do that. Yeah, I know. I think it's a new technique. I think yeah. these manufacturers are missing a trick here. Yeah, yeah, very short. Like chopsticks, you tend to hold yeah. them near the front end as well. Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. The, the chopstick, we'll call that. Yeah. Well, they don't need leverage, do I, when them? No, no, apparently not. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, we're going. So are we working towards a, a career in the festive season, are we? We seem to be growing the beard out and the hair. Do you think <laughs> it's a sort of December season in a few know years? You never yeah, 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 know. You never know. It's, uh, you could be the first slim Santa okay, <laughs> that we ever have. <laughs> Popular down the village hall. I just hide it well. Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah it's all good. So we're nearly there. So th this, for a non-dart player, or sorry, non-electrician, I should suggest, David, I don't think you've let yourself down. Plenty as he Larry. No, I mean, that's that's a good, it's a good effort. That. Yeah, it's a good effort. Good effort. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. There you go. So we're fiddling happy, them into there. How are we doing with the mics, folks? Are we got, are you sorted? Yeah, okay, good. So that's all good. So we're having a replacement one there. So if you flip the screwdriver in the mouth there as well. Yeah, oh yeah, we have plenty of that. I think that's that's actually a Larry thing, that is. Larry loves uh loves it. Okay, so right, right, that's the first one finished. Now Larry, you're up. Oh, not gonna Ooh, lightning's up, here he comes. Hold on to your hats. Here we go. So ooh, look at that. aggressive start. Aggressive start. Oh, screwdriver's already in the mouth. Yes, yeah. We had a lot of that. I don't speak screwdriver. Well, hopefully we've edited this well. I would say yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, we'll get. Look at this though. He had Formula One style wristwatch. So the minute he got on there, he got out the fancy wristwatch. Had it going off. It went off a lot of times as well when you were doing that race. So I saw a lot of people trying to get older. Here we go then. So you can get this. Oh, yeah. So you so can get this lump up the pipe. Getting hints and tips as we go along on your watch. Ooh. Oh, well done. Non glasses, you notice. Yes, I mean, had, a, had a whiff of Timmy Mallet, I think, when the first set were on. <laughs> so I was hoping you were going to be wearing those ones. I left them we didn't. at home. Yeah, okay. Right, so we're oh. going to be struggling here. This is yeah, we had a lot of struggling, didn't we? Yeah. For somebody who's a qualified electrician. Going through. We lost we one. Yeah, no brown. Yeah, <laughs> it came eventually, it uh, followed on afterwards. Like the strippers? Yeah, no, they're good. I'm not used to strippers like that. No, no, that's what people no say. No other comments. No, no, no. no. Welcome. Oh, full Ramo. Oh, He's gone in with a full Ramo. I love it. Absolute. So I've had chewing screwdriver, full Ramo. You know where it's going, folks. Look at that. <laughs> Look at, it's like a ploughed field, that Ed. Yeah. Reminds you of Clarkson's farm. Yeah, yeah, just oh, the seeds Oh, absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, what's the tool Winter that you... Bar, was it yeah. one Clarkson did? Yeah, so when you've cut the grass for the first time, you send over that electric rake, but it's got a name. What's that? Scarify. Again. Scarify. Now, what it ends up doing is leaving lots of patches where there wasn't grass, maybe clover, and it's tugged all those bits out. Yes. And your hair reminded me of my lawn when I've sent that... Is it sca that scar it? Scarify? Oh, Scarify okay. through. Yeah, my mum's got one. Often borrow it. Paid for that. Yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's an in, in, incredible look. Yeah, incredible look. So we're there. This is this is this is an half bad. We've edited it well. So uh, four connections Take away. A bit of time off that. Yeah, no worries. But the non glasses. Is this the one where we couldn't see the screw? Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> Fortunately. Yeah, we had a long long attempt. Nice shoes though. Trying well, to be the, yes. Oh, back in the mouth of the screwdriver. Yeah, back in there. There's a the dog ball. I'd like to say that both of you put it in your mouth and there was no sterilisation between runs either, was there? So we're whatever one of you's yeah, got, we're, we're, we're close friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. yeah. We're sort of kneeling down. I was going to say that when you're both running. Right, you're lengthening these cables as well again. Oh, yeah, this is the one. This is the, um, yeah, this is a novel approach to getting them in. I was just, look at that wristwatch. That's a beauty, isn't it? Could have probably stood up to do that. You didn't need the cables. That much left of those cables. You didn't need to kneel down. There we go, so a neutral. Did they all stay in this time? Because we had some issues, <coughs> didn't we? Some of them were popping well, depends out. Depends which one you're showing. <laughs> <laughs> it's allegedly your best one. Back in the mouth, there we go. So here we go, what are we gonna do with all of these? Curl them up, there we go. Oh, that will easily. Yeah. That's it, that's it. Oh, 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 hang on, yeah, we, we did twig. Yeah, yeah. Okay. round we go. So. Unless that's one of the rules, to put the socket on the right way around. Well, I've, put I've upside down. Um, yeah. bought a house with sockets that are upside down when they're on a the skating board. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. Oh yeah, so you can get the flex in. Yeah. Back out the mouth. We're there, ploughed field in view, and up we go, lightning, Larry. <laughs> yeah, decent. It, yeah, yeah, I mean, we might have hoodwinked just slightly there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. The first go was good, though, wasn't it? 
Oh, it's only uh, just it finished right, as yeah. well, hasn't it? The first goal. <laughs> it, it took a while. Yeah, it took some it? time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he went first I'm, as the electrician. Probably is what I like to say. Yeah. Slows another word. Doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we get charged by the hour, you know. Yeah, we get charged yeah, by yeah, the hour, yeah. so there's no point rushing. Absolutely. Right. Are you going to give us some times, Gordon? Well, we'll have a look at the leaderboard. So, is anyone? Do you know anybody we'll on there? Let's have a look. Uh, so we'll thankfully, leave. no. No. Yeah, thankfully, no. no. So you're, you're definitely our first ventilation people on there. I mean, you're top there. You're in sort of classic electrician territory up there. Yeah. I, 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 Middle of the lawn is former electrician territory. Really, people who've sort of moved mm. on to start as electricians and went on to do things. Peter Way, been, been, yeah, exactly. good, good, yeah, Peter, a good example there. He didn't want to do the race well, didn't he? And then crushed everybody that came in on the same day. Yeah, yeah. I think yes. Alan could be a dark horse, but he didn't do it either. So. Okay, so. Right, so who's, uh, oh, well, we might as well go with uh, non-dark non 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 player. That was, okay. that was, uh, that was oh, yeah, David. A little bit David. So David. you did this in four minutes Ooh. and 22 Oh. That puts you. That is that is good there because Trevor used to be an electrician. Yep. TV blocks Trevor. Alex, he, he sells tools, oh. so he hasn't really got an excuse. Oh, and really just and you're actually above Peter Wade. Oh, that's a nice place to be. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Do, do you know him from Mega? Peter Wade from Mega. No. Oh, no. make sure you go around. I will go after yes. tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah you will do. Find him on LinkedIn. Don't look, you worry. Look, yeah. look him up on LinkedIn. <laughs> and uh, Larry, you did this. You can, in. you can cut there now. That's fine. <laughs> you did this in. Well, it starts with a five. So that's. Uh, Oh dear, I won't be back here. I'm going to have to crouch down. So you're at five minutes, 47. Ooh. Which actually, we're going to have to juggle here above Simon Harrison. Paul, oh, you're one second slower than Paul Elcock. And he has no electrical background, just does books. Yeah, he just does books. Works for the, used to work for the NIC, so you're sort of nesting in safely, just one second slower than him. Well done, Dave. Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. Yeah, really good. I yeah. was quite nervous about that. Well, it shouldn't have been. Shouldn't have been. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know it's but you can't wait to go back to work, can you? No. But you can't wait. I bet the old yeah, group no, chat's no, no, all yeah. light now and it'll work. Oh, have you seen, you seen how they got on? P45. Weirdly, I, you know, I was. I thought it'd be a bit of fun. It when was. You get on it, you just want to win. All right, okay. And you did. I did. It must be a nice place to be. And you, you beat the electrician at work and, and all the rest of it. And, well, it didn't just beat him, you comprehensively beat him. That was a good him. Yeah, yeah, minute, yeah, over yeah, a yeah. minute in it, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. Was it your last run that was best? Can you tell with your glasses? Do we have glasses on on the. Uh, not on the last run. So it was no. the middle run, was it? Was it? The middle, well, yeah, I don't know which one was the best, but mm. <laughs> they were all terrible. They were all terrible. <laughs> yeah, they were all terrible. <laughs> the bit of trouble with keeping it, um, you know. Right, so we're well, going to get into the meat, into the meat and veg. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Ventilation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, ventilation, you know, sort of. Who actually does it on building sites? Is it the plumber's job? Is it the builder's Oof. job? Is it the electrician? It's normally the electrician. Right. I say normally because sometimes they'll do a bit and then hand the rest of it to the plumber yep. as he the duct in, depending on if it's a, just an extract fan or a whole house system. Yep. Um, but normally it's the electrician because somebody's got to wire it in. Um, right. Normally it'll be su suitable. Don't use the same principle on boilers, do we? Sort of, you no, know, the boiler's no. got an electrical supply and lots of pipes attached to it. But uh, yeah, ventilation for me seems more like, I mean, more like poo pipes, really, if you sort so, of... So, oh. Sorry, sorry, Gordon. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most un-PG you've ever been. What did you call that word? Poo? poo. We're still back into our Saturday mood, are we? We're trying to be a little bit flippant. Yeah, yeah plumbers like to play in the mud, doesn't People it? have been known to use soil pipe for yes. ventilation, which isn't very good, but yep. it has been known to be used. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll dig into that. And we've got some howlers that people make, actually. I don't know, Rick, you brisk bring my screen in. Gary's got an embarrassing wet patch. You had one of these, Gary. Yeah, you? so, yeah, classic example, isn't it? Of an extra extract fan that makes a lovely noise, mm. hums away. You certainly know it's only if you're in bed yep. and you're waiting for the 15 stroke 20 minutes to pass. Absolutely. And actually, and then you find out it isn't working when, I think it was the CPD that we did or one of the um, uh, Q&A questions that we did for you where you take a piece of A3 card, is that right? And uh, yeah, A5 card. A5 card. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong, didn't I? So, yeah, A4, A3's massive. A5 card to it, and hold it up there, and it should hold in place, yeah? Mine didn't hold in place in either of my bathrooms, so I thought I'd, I'd drop it down a level, give it a bit of a chance. So I dropped it down to one sheet of toilet roll with both layers. Okay, we're not talking mega quilted here. Two ply. Just, yeah, a couple of ply. I put it on, it didn't hold. I separated the sheets, and it still didn't hold, okay? So I had one wafer thin sheet, you know, your finger would have gone through that, you know, and some, <laughs> yeah, and it didn't hold, okay? So actually, I spent... It was clean. Yes, it was. But I spent, you know, probably 13 of the 15 years with that on the ceiling. It actually did nothing. And then, of course, I caused myself another problem, which you've gone through with me. I used to open the Velux window in my bathroom, and I've now got a problem with temperature change. Is that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. So obviously, we the... The Velux window opening, the cold air is going to the ceiling where your Velux window is. Yep. 
your warm moist air is being attracted to that and condensating up on the uh, the ceiling, which is why you get the water on the, the so, ceiling. So I would have been better off leaving the window shut with a fan that works. With a fan that's works, which, which I've now got. I've got yeah. the, uh, is it the 100 or 150? Yeah, silent 100. I have got the silent yeah. 100 now. Working well. But yes, it's yeah. passed all the tests that I've given it recently. Okay. <laughs> but that brings me back to, I've got another bathroom with no window in it. And I was paranoid about having a shower in there. So we didn't have a shower in there for a long time. And then post my daughter's accident, we put a shower in there to make it easier for her. And I've been paranoid that that would get mould in it. And it hasn't because yeah. you've answered the question for me. Because I haven't got yeah. a window drawing cold air in. Yeah, there's no cold walls, no cold air being drawn in. The, the walls are nice and warm. Yeah. So the moisture's not being attracted to them. They're it's not. drawn out by the fan. Unbelievable. Thank you very much for coming, Larry. And sorry I was so sorry. hard on the no, racks with you. It was brilliant information. Yeah. So then, back to the screen there, Rick. So what caused Gary's embarrassing wet patch? I'm not saying this was Gary's actual. No, it is an example of no. it, isn't it? I'll, I'll let Dave answer this one yeah. if you... Well, I would suggest that is some form of water forming inside the, the ductwork, um, probably because you've got uninsulated ductwork. So the, you, the water's condensing within the roof structure and it's forming and then running down the pipe and finding its natural way out through the ceiling. Oh, is this something you can relate to, Gordon? Yeah, I mean, obviously, now we have done a fantastic CPD with EnviroVent. I, I listened to it. I think I was walking the dog at the time. I was listening to it. I was like, oh, this, is, this, is, this is good. I think I'm going to have to get back up in the loft when I get back home because I discovered, obviously, you're supposed to insulate the pipework leaving yes. your uh, extractor fans, aren't you? Yeah, if it's in an unheated area, lot yeah. of space, it should be insulated to stop any condensation. Which September problem. might. It's cold yeah. up there, isn't it? It's, it's coming cold up there. there. Ducting's cold. So I had a problem that I kept, obviously, the fan in the bathroom kept sort of expiring every probably two years or something like that, and there was always water inside the terminal block. Yeah. And I think that was down to condensation Will be. coming back down. So again, pipe. although fans are IPX rated, or most of them are IPX4 rated, suitable for a bathroom, zone one or two, they're tested with the water coming from the front of the sides, but not from the back where the spigot is, where it's coming from the ducting. So it's getting down into the electronics. Yeah, so that was, yeah, so that was my um, embarrassment. You know, we're both obviously experts in ventilation, but well, little, easy mistake. Yeah, a little bit yeah. more. We've got any other howlers that don't uh, relate to us? So this one's a great one. Just have a look at this one, Rick. So what's going on here? <laughs> that is not, well, that is somebody doing a bit of a tissue test, <laughs> but this is on the outside of a building. This is using a, a whole house ventilation system. So it's a mechanical right. ventilation with heat recovery. So you have a supply and extra fan um, this is just proving there that that vent is actually the supply air into the property yeah the big issue with this one is it's right above a boiler flume okay. oh yeah uh, so that just so that's it's sucking air now. into the building sucking air into the building and putting that air into the bedrooms and the living rooms i hadn't yeah. spotted that uh, or as we call it so, carbon monoxide yes wow. yeah. uh, not very good that should when it's above it it should depending on the size of the boiler but we'd always recommend at least two meters above maybe three oh i think that's sensible yeah, advice but perhaps, perhaps meters, but... you know perhaps someone was thinking ahead of the time we were thinking actually there's there's hot air in that waste <laughs> yes <laughs> i'll recover that, that heat thinking, by putting it through the building back, back again Wow. wow, yeah. So, I mean, that picture there, I don't know if you... But obviously, the boiler looks like it came after those other vents. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So is that the... this, is, this is really... The heating engineer, the plumber, should be aware of that. But he may not have realised that that is a supply vent. Because, yeah. again, if it's an extract vent, like the one on the left, they can be a little bit closer because they're always extracting. Uh, but, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He may not have known, but it should have been checked. Yeah. But also, the supply and extract ones should be between sort of a metre and two metres apart. Yeah, otherwise uh, you're sending hot air, you're just yeah. dragging it back. So you're just short circuiting the air again, so. All right, so lots of mistakes. Yeah, a lot Good of mistakes picture. on that one. Yeah. Yeah. But you were chuffed so, to find that. Yeah, well. You still live there? Commiserations. <laughs> uh, commiserations my to best the dead work, family huh? who, who used to live in that property all died. Always complaining about headaches. Side. Yeah, always yeah. complaining yeah. about Always fell asleep in front of the telly. Yeah. 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 Wow, Fantastic. that was, uh, that's, a, that's a good, right, what's going on here? This looks like, uh, uh, well, that, believe it or not, is a filter out of a heat recovery system again. Um, obviously never been changed in approximately four or five years. So they're normally white, a uh, nice white fluffy thing, and they're normally quite a, a solid shape. But that was because it's been so blocked, it's become sodden, wet, uh, and basically the unit's not going to be moving any air. But if you look at that filter, the idea is that's stopping that kind of air coming into the property. Without that filtration, that air is coming into the property, but you know they need to be maintained on a regular basis. The filters for these units should be checked regular, but changed at least every year. Right. You can tell that thing's just never been changed. Yeah. Now I'm thinking hot, wet air, normally damp, 
Yeah. It's sort of breeding ground for bacteria, is that sort it of? It is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's, I think, I don't know if you're going to show it, but there's another image of the inside of a unit, which... Uh, oh, is that potentially, another one? Uh, that's another filter that was on the other side of the unit. So again, you can see there, yeah. it's, you know, it should be a nice white colour. Yeah. But that's got some stuff growing on it. Oh. That is the inside of the unit. That's oh. the kind of bacteria oh. that is growing inside the unit and that is now being blown into the property where people oh. are breathing the air in. Oh, that's, that's lovely. So the first family we killed with carbon monoxide, this one we're trying to... We're poisoned with, slowly. We're poisoned slowly with yeah. noxious bacteria. Yeah. Wow. That's a, yeah. And again, we, yeah, it has been in the news recently, and it's certainly in the last 12 months, some of these incidents and all the rest of it, but this is, yeah, this is unreal. This is, that is one that's got a system down there. That is a fan impeller down there. Yeah. It's got a system in, but we're obviously an unmaintained system. So, uh, I don't say always as bad as not having one at all, but wow, that's not good at all. No, see, to me, this looks like a plumber's job because that looks pretty manky. Yeah, yeah. I like that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't yeah. be doing that. That's nothing to do with an electrician, that's yeah. unfortunate. Right, that's slightly strange. different change of tack here. Oh, what we've got here looks like something from Blue Peter, what we're making yeah. here. Good um, one for you, David. Well, Hopefully. the pipes at the back are the what we call the atmosphere pipes, right. and they are uninsulated, and they should always be fully insulated, all the way to termination point. Um, because the unit's in a loft space, as you can see, all the, all the roof structure behind it, um, those pipes will attract moisture on the outside. So, which you, what you don't want to do. And the pipes at the front are um, pretty tight, so they don't give a, a, a nice pathway for the air to come from the dwelling and back out to, into the, the habitable rooms from the other pipe. Um, they don't look to be particularly well connected, but the ones at the back, we would always recommend some form of um, decoupling with a, a small section of insulated pipe. Um, so you haven't got a direct connection to the machine, so you're not transferring um, any vibrations for it. So indirectly, you could be causing a damp issue in your loft by those yeah. pipes getting damp yeah. on the outside. Because that water will ultimately oh, trickle right. down and it will find its way back through the, uh, through the insulation and through the plasterboard. So yeah, you start having a brown ceiling without realising it. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. With everything connected, you go up there and think there, you know, there must be a, a leak somewhere within the unit. Yeah, it's exactly. actually, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And, and, and uh, we have been back to sites like that before. I've been back to them and wandered around roof spaces and, and you look at the ductwork and you can't see what's obviously wrong. And then you put your hand down and it's, the, the, the quality just suddenly. I'm not sure as an electrician that, you know, me and Larry as electricians, I'm not sure that if I turned up at that, that I'd have enough knowledge to know that there was a problem with that. You know, and I'll, I'll put my hands up to that one. I'd yeah, agree. yeah, because it, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? You know, it's like, oh, well, this is the, it's great. Like it's very neat. They're sort of yeah. doubled over the ends yeah. there. They're yeah. thinking it's just yeah. like yeah. a table. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it's it. To the untrained eye, it's, I, yeah, yeah, I probably, yeah, I probably would be more concerned now. But I'm talking about that uninsulated mm. damp issue. That would yeah. be something that maybe not in my wheelhouse. Okay, I've got another one. Yeah, well, I've got loads in here. Oh, what's going on here? This looks quite Ooh, busy. It's a bit like spaghetti junction, really, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, for, for ducting. So the first thing is that there there's doesn't appear to be any um, connections to the machine that are um, you know, secured. Uh, it may be underneath the, uh, the double layer, but it's just a bit of a mess. So is that it's an insulated pipe? It's insulated flexible pipe, yeah. um, or flexible ducting, as, as we call it. But it's not very neat. It's got quite tight bends in it. Um, any bends that you introduce into ductwork just slows the air down, gives it extra resistance, so the machine's got to work harder. Is there rules? Yes, there are rules. Yeah. So, so, so long, so many bends and things yep. like that. Come, give us a rule. I love a rule. Well, typically, you want the, the, the ducting to be, what, about 750 mil ish from the uh, machine? Off, yeah, off, off the unit, yeah. we normally, the insulated flex, we normally allow sort of three to 500 mil yep. before you go on to rigid. Yes. Bends should be a rigid bend, and obviously in a loft space insulated. Um, if you're using flexible ducting as a bend it should be a sweeping bend so the radius the internal radius of that bend not getting into it too much should be the size of the ducting so just a very gentle uh, gentle bend so it's a piece of ducting bent round uh, a bit of a hairpin bend okay. to get to one of the valves so again that's a really tight bend going to cause a lot of issues with the air movement and noise from the unit because mm -hmm. the unit's going to have to work harder to achieve the air flows. You need to get out a little bit more, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody saw that. There's some wiring. <laughs> right, there we go. That's something we're familiar with. We can see a oh, fuse. Oh, unfortunately. What's, uh, what's the problem here? Um, there's no waterless trap between the unit and the condensate pipe that goes off to um, the soil and waste. Um, so there's a potential there for smells and other things to be drawn back into the machine when they're running. They create a vacuum inside. Right. Waterless trap gets rid of the condensate, which the machines make pretty much 24-7 yeah. by the process of heat recovery. Um, so what we're trying to do there is make sure that we get the water out without introducing smells back into oh, the right. machine. So essentially they've connected that directly pretty to like much the direct. soil pipe. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, okay. It's like when your drain runs dry, it's like you get a nice whiff. Yeah. Yeah. Nice smells coming through. And, <laughs> and then you distribute it to the rest of yeah. the house. You'll the also get a build up of water inside the unit because the water can't run down there because it's drawing it's air. Sucked up, up basically. It. Right. Wow. Lovely. When you don't know, you don't know, do you? No, you wouldn't know that either. Got any more, Gordon? Uh, right, what's going on here? This looks good. So we're Right. So we can see on this one that somebody's used, again, a lot of flexible ducting, but yep. they have managed to insulate some of it. But the last leg, obviously, it's not insulated, so we're going to get the condensate issue again. And you then the worst thing is they then shove the end of it, obviously, into the eaves, and they'll have had to squash it down to get through the eaves to get to the soffit and the... Uh, I've never done that. <laughs> it's a common thing. Oh, no, no I've never done that, Larry. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing that, to that see here. Is that not from your house? No, just, just, yeah, yeah, trying to get it in that bit where you just, yeah, because, you, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Nice. This one looks fun. Oh, what are we doing here? Yeah. This is, oh, go on, David. I'm going to have a guess here that maybe somebody didn't have the core drill with him that day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we've just bashed a, a number of holes through uh, the brickwork, block work, um, and hope for the best. Um, the trick that a lot of people try and do is use a, a you know a nine by six terracotta air brick and line them up. Yeah. You just don't have the free area. Right. You need to have at least a hundred mil um, hole through the wall to get the air through and out to atmosphere properly. Right. Mm. That's uh, yeah. Wow. Where did we get these photos from? My collection. <laughs> no, it was mine. <laughs> right. Oh, this one looks. Uh, one I did earlier. This one looks good. Right. I think that's from this your is... bathroom, Gary. I think that's so you can get the <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. pipe closer to the cause of the so, problem. This is that lovely flexible ducting that we like to use, not. Um, but again, flexible ducting causes a lot of resistance with systems. Uh, it can be used in certain scenarios. This is a straight through the wall fan. So if you imagine your, your walls, maybe only three, 400 mil thick. Yep. So outside, obviously some people have a lot thicker walls, but somebody's used quite a lot of flexible ducting there and squashed it into the wall. When you're squashing it, the internal diameter is getting reduced, so you've probably actually only got a one-inch hole rather than a four-inch hole, and then the fan's not going to extract the air out. Yes. What are the chances, eh? So rather than chop the pipe, they've just yeah. pushed oh, it yeah. up like a concertina. I've paid for it, I'm going to use it, I'll squash it all in there. Right. Safe store in the garage. Feel like I did with my cables, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Paid for them, I'm going to use them. It's more like <laughs> therapy this session now for me. It is. Go on in. What's right. this one? What have oh, I done wrong here? insulated, Gary. There yeah. you go. Just, yeah. You're getting it. And this it's... is your loft, is it, Gordon? I had used some solid pipe, but it wasn't insulated. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so what, because to, to, to the, I think someone's put a bit of effort now. We understand it's not insulated now, yeah. but that's quite, they've tried to keep that quite free of tight bends, haven't they? They have, yeah, but if you imagine again, it's not insulated as a big thing, but the flexible ducting, if you imagine the inside of it, it's not smooth. Nope. So when it's not pulled taut, it creates a, a ripple effect with the air. And if you imagine throwing a, a stone into the water, it creates that ripple effect. Yep. You get the same with air, and then that creates a higher resistance reduces the airflow of the fan. So right. that's probably reduced the performance of the fan by more than three quarters. So, I, so I should have pulled that as tight as I possibly yeah. could? Yeah. Make it shoot really so tight. Wow. Again, supported every 600 mil. I can't do a customer <laughs> recall now, can I? Wow. I, um, I, so, yeah. Yeah. Now also on that, because that, that part there's bone down the middle, if you get water, is that going to start? Yeah, you'll end up with a, where, where you've got that bow, you'll end up with a puddle of water and that'll get deeper and deeper over time. <laughs> yep. Again, you've got stagnant water there. there. I'd just like to withdraw that statement where I said it looked all right at the start now. <laughs> wow, yeah, but you can see, can't you? Electricians were thought they put some effort into that. So it needs to take yeah. probably the shortest possible straight run. Yeah. Be the pipe as straight as it can possibly can, and tight as it can be. Ideally rigid. There yeah. is a regulations on the amount of flexible ducting you can use with fans, depending on the type of the fan. So, for instance, your standard actual fan that you might get in a bathroom, you're only supposed to use one and a half metres of flexible ducting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go on. Oh, here's another yeah. one, another flexi ducting. Wow. And there you go, S similar again, you know. But if you look at this one, what we've got here, um, the fan is just on the right hand side. Yeah. Not only is the flexible ducting been used, uh, it's squashed, kinked, tight bend in it, not insulated. It doesn't terminate anywhere other than in the loft space. All oh, right, so that's just, it's just sat there in the loft space. Blessing. So, wow, Larry, you're a bit of fun sponge there with that one, weren't you? Really, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Wow, <laughs> there is nothing wrong right with that, is that? Push wow. all that nice warm moist air into a cold loft space. Good. Um, that's going to cause issues within the loft space itself and the rafters. Yeah, the fabric of the building. As we call it, wow. dry rot. Okay, wet yeah. rot. <laughs> is that is that us? Is that us? Have we got. Oh, no. No, we're still. Oh. Wow, well, that's a good that effort. Looks all right, that. Yeah, that's straight. Pulled taut. Insulated. Pulled taut. Yeah, I like that yeah. one. Not insulated. Yeah. 
it's and it's one and a half meters. Again, when you say not insulated, that is against a very old looking roof. That is yes. on to freezing cold effectively. Yes. Isn't there? There's nothing. Yes. Yeah, so that's going to cause you loads. Of, but again, pen, oh, so I suppose, are we extracting upwards and out, are yes. we? Ooh, that's, Believe it or not, that actually goes up and down the other side before it goes out through that <laughs> lovely soffit. If, we, the if the we're the other way, the moisture would have at least left, wouldn't it? We'd yeah. have gone rolling yeah, down. Yeah, run down the Yeah, but we've not got that either. So, no, well, right, I'm no. all over this. Oh, this is another mine. Um, <laughs> <She's> <laughs> oh, oh, time to confess, David. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so we've all we've all yeah. had a bit of therapy. This, <laughs> this up here. Yeah, this is what I had to go and see about eighteen months or so ago. It's a new build property, um, and the complaint was we weren't sure whether the fans were working. And when we went, when I went to actually test them with their anemometer, they, they were well below what they needed to do to achieve regulations. And then on closer inspection, we found that. Um, this is in a utility room, so it's a 125 mil fan this time, not a 100 mil, to get the, um, the required uh, litre per second. As you can see, somebody's managed to get um, quite a bit of mortar inside the ductwork. Um, the flexible ducting is covering a good two thirds of the outlet of the fan, so the, the fan's whizzing around, they're making lots of noise, but the air physically can't get out. There's more air coming back into the room and going out. Right. I'm more remarkable how you got in there with a camera. Oh, okay, yeah, it was uh, three secrets. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell you that one. <laughs> pretty, pretty good shot, isn't it? It's like, yeah, yeah like the moon landing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and this one, this one looks. This, this, is, this is this is a lovely one. This is actually quite a recent one. Um, the the outside shell that you can see there, the big rectangular thing. This is actually part of a different fan, and what's happened is the fans failed. Um, it's one of our fans, and you can actually buy a replacement central cartridge. Okay. You can plug it in, plug it out without an electrician. Very simple. Somebody's decided to go down, down the local DIY shop and just buy their own little 10, 15 pound fan off the wall and stick it inside the unit and then put it on it. Uh, obviously, the fans and the things we use are, are IPX rated, as I mentioned before. Uh, here, they've put a fan in there with the wires going into it. There's no protection. There's no cover on it? No. Well, no, no there was a cover. Oh, oh okay. But the cover was, doesn't form the IPX rating because with ours, if you look at the top of that fan, there's a rubber thing on the inside, like yep. a, a, a rubber seal. That's good, that yeah. protects the electronics when the proper cartridge is in there. Um, where with this in there, the actual front cover is going to offer no, no protection to the electronics or the end user. And all I could think of when I looked at that was, why would you use mini trunking in a bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think of. Yeah. Nothing else. Didn't nothing to ruin these tiles. Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> just that bit of mini trunking. You know you're on a great job when you see the mini trunk <laughs> on top of the tiles, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. 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 Awful. Absolutely awful. So uh, I think that's it. All right, okay. I've got I've got a question for you then. So it's something that sort of bothered me back in the day when I was installing extractor systems rather well, rather well. I would suggest I was doing a, an Olympic job of all the mistakes we've just discussed. There is, I go into a bathroom, maybe go into a kitchen area, and obviously the first thing I do is cut a great big hole in there, mm -hmm. and then I've got a radiator in there or some sort of warming device in there. Yeah, I've got a massive great big hole in the ceiling, and actually I'm venting all my hot air out. Explain. Yeah, you are. Yeah, okay. okay. No, you are, it's, it's, it's very difficult, but you, you do take some hot air out when you're extracting the fan, but the air movement a fan does, um, the building regulations, depending on the room, so for a bathroom, an intermittent fan, you need to achieve what we call 15 litres per second. So yep. that's 15 litres of air every second. If you calculate that into the size of that room and the volume of air you're moving in that room, it's actually less than the natural infiltration of the whole house. So the natural air movement in the house itself for uh, a, a, an older house um, is more airs coming in and going out than what that fan's taken out of that room. Right. Um, okay, so it's, checks and balances. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not losing everything. Oh, obviously no, I'm, I'm you're going to lose a little right. bit. And I have lost a bit of warmth there, but, haven't I? Yeah, you've lost a bit. Up. But the idea that what you're trying to do there is get rid of the moisture you're creating. Yep. Um, or it could be any um, fumes you're creating through if you're cooking with a gas hob or anything like that. Yep. You need to expel all those, those gases that aren't being burnt off to outside because if you don't, they end up migrating around the house, people are breathing them in, your condensation or the, your moisture you create in the bathroom will migrate around the rest of the house and then you'll end up with condensation and mould on, on, in other places in the house. So it's really important that we have ventilation in a, in a property. It's, it is totally important and I've, I've seen it in two different bathrooms and thanks to you earlier on. But then, then people talk about heat recovery to me and get, let's get it around everyone's head how this is working. So I've got some warm air maybe in a kitchen or a bathroom and I'm going to take that warm air and chuck it outside, aren't I? Yeah. 
I've yeah. not recovered much heat. I've not recovered much heat no, yeah. there, have I? What you get with a heat recovery system is um, we, we have an extract and supply air. So okay. we extract the, the warm, moist air from all the wet rooms. It does it continually at a low rate, and then it will go to a higher rate if you're cooking or, yeah. or bathing or anything like that. You're in the shower in your birthday suit, creating all that moisture. Get rid of it to outside. At the same time, we bring air back into the property directly from outside yeah. on a separate duct goes through the unit where there's what we call a, a cell in there, which is a heat recovery cell, and then we supply that air into the habitable room, so it can be the, the, the bedrooms, the living rooms, anywhere like that. But the unit itself will recover anywhere between 85 and 90% of the heat you're taking out. So if you're taking heat out of your bathroom at 20 degrees, and it's zero degrees outside, again, just for the ease of my maths, the air coming into your habitable rooms, your bedroom, and it might be about 17. Your heating system's only got to heat it up another three degrees. I love it. To to get it back to 20. So why have we not been, so in this world dashing for solar, dashing for battery and all the rest of it, why have people not been the, you know, quite recently dashing for a whole uh, house ventilation system where we can recycle this heat? Yeah, a lot of it is down to cost and, people, and, and people's knowledge. People still like the traditional on and off fan because that's what we've all been brought up to know. Right. And it's worked in the old Victorian houses when we had single glaze and a lot of natural leakage. Now we've started to seal these houses up as you, you're doing with your electric avenue here, yep. making them nice and airtight so we keep all the heat in. We're now more reliant on a ventilation strategy to, to get rid of all these contaminants. Heat recovery is the best option, but you're going to pay a lot more to get that installed because you've got ducted into every room, a bigger unit, requires more maintenance. But it's part of the whole solution. Yeah. We're all dashing now, aren't we, to try and be greener. We know about the energy crisis and all the rest of it. This is another part of solving the problem. If it was already built into every house, like solar, like battery and the rest of it, which yeah. we haven't got to yet, it's another way of saving energy. My only fear is at the moment is, let's say I had a whole house ventilation system in and I've gone and been a little bit cheeky on the thermostat in the last six months because my old brain's been focused. I've wound it down. Obviously, if I've dropped to 17 using your system, I'm only pulling it back in at, say, 12, 13 degrees. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, so you're, your heating's still not having to work as hard to get it back to 17, but it's better in a more airtight house, more energy-efficient house, because if you keep it at 18, the, the heat will stay in there. You yeah. Know, it's not going through all this natural leakage, so heat recovery works really well in a more modern airtight house or if somebody's doing a lot of work on an existing house to make it airtight. Yeah. Um, you know. It'd be interesting to see if we can get any comments on that, if you're the sort of person that's spent a lot of this I stuff. in a minute, Gary, look at the comments, people are reaching for the loft ladders. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I, I am a serial offender. I, I doubt I've ever installed one correct. That's embarrassing. I haven't, done a, lot, I haven't done a lot of extracting systems, mostly for friends yeah. and family, so they're all wrong. Um, yeah. um, unfortunately, uh, ventilation is one of those industries that's been left behind a little bit. Yep. The regulations have just changed recently. Yep. They're getting more strict it's now a controlled service but it's going to take time for that to filter out but when we mention you know who, whose responsibility is it is it the plumber is it the electrician nobody ever teaches them about ventilation they don't understand about air movement through the whole building air movement through a fan you know you put you put a bit of flexi ducting on the back of the fan you can potentially stop that fan from doing any air movement it'll just use a lot of power and make a bit of noise but nobody teaches a plumber or an electrician about that but you know we know if you put a water pipe in a house if you size it right you're going to get the water pressure at the other end oh that's a good analogy i like yeah. ones why don't we start off with that one that's uh, that's spot on for me again yeah and again how much stuff can you be taught at college i think there's enough to teach as it is and what we don't want to do is start teaching it wrong do we no so there would be nothing yeah. worse than maybe some practices that i'd done on site imagine i took my extractor fan knowledge into college your flexi yeah pipe. flexi pipe everywhere and insulated like flapping around going up hills and down hills round sharp corners squashing it in to get in that would be the race yeah it is it is yeah. so it's everyone's responsibility it's not electrician's responsibility it could be anyone's responsibility yeah. this one wow okay interesting got any questions for us on there gordon uh, there's loads i think i think we'll have to just obviously people got the loft ladders out there now they're just peeping at their own installations testing the testing the toilet roll against the fan yeah, yeah. while they're doing that i think we best have a look see what rick's been up oh, to this, this is week. a cracker so we'll have to because we, we we're tight on time today we haven't had time to put rick's uh, title tune in so oh so we've got a sing have we we'll have sing. to sing it Derek, yeah. ready ready, oh, we're so ready rick? we're to... it's rick's tool hello time. and welcome to rick's tool time this week i've got something a bit special for you it's the auto laser master 3 engraving and cutting tool and apparently you can engrave food which is naturally music to my ears but till then we're gonna to have to wait till friday before i can engrave my fish and chips 
So until then, let's have a little look at some of the applications which I think are great for electricians. If you're an electrical contractor who likes to get their brands on almost everything, this is the tool for you. I've made up these solar cable warning labels on this 1.5mm ABS sheet. The inner black core gives the colour of the final engraving. This demonstrates that I can use the laser master to engrave and then finish off with a cutting function to create the final shape and even an area to secure the label with cable ties. And this is a great option if you're looking for more durability and long lasting alternative to those adhesive stickers. But not only that, somewhere you can proudly display your company logo. I've also done the same with the Rick's Two Time logo where I've used a white cord laminate with a red front. This hasn't quite turned out how I was expecting so I'll have to try a few more runs. I've got loads of different sample laminates to try out including metal, plastic, MDF and plywood. The 10 watt LED laser can cut plastic such as acrylic up to 30 millimeters thick and wood around 12 millimeters thick. It can even cut leather and rubber so that could throw up some interesting merch. And speaking of plywood that brings me to this if you want to mark all the kit you use on site, your ladders, storage boxes, why not making a paint spray template, even Banksy will be proud of this little number. <laughs> we even engraved the spur, we just need to perfect the way in which we fill the engraving. Not sure that this acrylic pen set from a well known online retailer is the best option. The engraver can engrave at up to 2 meters per second. The actual speed depends upon the material and the depth of the engraving. It will need to change depending on what you're doing. The printer comes with a mobile app which is great at getting started. I used it to engrave a picture of Gary in the table. That wasn't a good idea. I'm going to have to change that top now aren't I? If you're wanting to step up your laser engraving game, I found this special bit of software called Lightburn. At the moment I'm running it at the trial option. The engraver connects to the app over the Wi-Fi network or using a USB cable which is supplied within the pack. The Auto Laser Master 3 comes as a kit of parts so you're going to have to assemble it yourself. There are plenty of instructions out there on YouTube so I'm not going to bore you on how to assemble it but what I will say is it was very straightforward and I'll leave a link in the description below. One thing you're also going to need to think about is where you're going to sit this laser engraver. At the moment I'm in the process of just building a platform to sit it on and it's given me the chance to break out the slot. And it's also given me the opportunity to break out the struts layer and this three-sided punched unistrut. Obviously when you're burning away materials you're going to have to think about smoke and fumes. So I've recycled a powerful but quiet EnviroVent fan we previously reviewed on the channel. I wouldn't recommend putting your hand under the laser or staring at the beam while it's engraving. So to summarise I think this is a fantastic tool. Not only will I be cutting all materials I'll be engraving everything everywhere. Not to mention this cheeky little Wago tin that I've personalised here. But what does it matter what I think? Is it great or is it a gimmick? Get your votes in and let me know. Well, till then, I'll see you on the flip side. ta -da. I think everyone will agree with us as we sat here and watched that and chuckled along. We hadn't seen the full version of that until it was released. That Rick has made a fantastic job. And to think, well, I think that's probably the third or fourth tool time we've had. And if you stayed on Rick's journey, I think you also can appreciate the effort he put into that. What a great bit of kit as well. But it isn't up to us, is it? It's up to the audience. And that means I've got to summon the tool from above. Now, I could ask you, Larry, but you've had a little bit of a tough time today. I would imagine our relationship is beyond fractured now, isn't it? Oh, no, we're right. Not... We're, we're still friends, don't you worry. And we've got, obviously, the, the dynamite over there. There, but we've, we've got somebody in the green room, haven't we? You we have. didn't want to do the race hall, didn't want to be on camera, have we? We've got, uh, as we like to affectionately known, we call him Alan. Okay, let's go and find Alan. Let's go and get Alan. Come on, Alan, you've got to come out with me. Here he is. I've bought a little, because you're the sort of softer handed type person, I've got a little a little, a little mat for you to kneel on. So kneel down on the mat, young man, and leave your dignity down there. David. Well, he's kneeling there. Go and just have a look at uh, Rick's trolley. All oh, right, okay, shall we bring it in? So, well, yeah, stay down there. So. Here we go, so this is Rick's handiwork. It does look like something off the uh, Ninky Nunk. Okay, as we come in here, is it the Pinky Bonk? Okay, so here we are. We've got, we've got a familiar item there on the side as well, haven't we? Yeah, so <laughs> the first time we uh, tried it, obviously we filled a workshop full of smoke as we burned through <laughs> my clipboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the there, there's the, uh, <laughs> there's the, the remnants of my clipboard I came into. 
um, and obviously filled it with smoke. So we thought we'd need some ventilation. So we had this from a couple of years ago, actually. Yeah, we did. And we've used flexi pipes, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, we kept it really taut there. as well, didn't we? We went out in a yeah. straight line, so uh, no changes in temperature. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah it's, it's a typical thing. I think there's more money in the stand than was in the laser engraver, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, there is. Yeah, but we'll put it to that, the fan on the side. Yeah, so anyway, but it's... Uh, mm. So that's it. There's our uh, new trolley. OK, let's move it out of the way because uh, we've left uh, young Alan on his knees for long enough. <laughs> OK, Alan, so, so just, that's all right. just, try and, just try and see what's left of your dignity as we come <laughs> and uh, we need to summon the tool from above. Ooh. Wow, hang on. So, well, don't even go there. You're having an absolute laugh, and you? Wow. Okay, so let's I'll, I'll practice with you. Wow. Well, Not a you, singer, I'm afraid. Well, no, 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 no. Okay, then, let's try them. Two. Not doing two. it. Look at that. Two. Two. See, see. Two. 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 There we go. Well we done, go. Alan. Ooh, hey. Well done, Alan. Thank you very much. Now go and sit in the green room. Thanks. <laughs> right. Oh. So what have we got in here then? Whatever you get to uh, oh. pull out the car. We couldn't fit the whole printer in the bag. Crikey. All right. So that's what we've got there. So you've, you've been between it. So the audience seem to be split here. Okay. Is it is it sort of great or gimmick? Because it looks to be halfway down the middle. Personally, I think it's great actually because we've had more fun uh, playing with that over the last couple of weeks. And uh, we're particularly looking forward to seeing Rick's leather and rubber wear yes. that he prints on. I think with the rubber, you can create your own sort of stamps, you know, for past and things like okay. that. I think okay. That's the, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The idea with that. Right. Okay. He's not wearing it. So, so we're going to need to. Would you like to send that up in a one, Larry, for me? Now we've yeah, embarrassed. Uh, yeah, yeah, we to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off we go. So try and leave uh, Dynamite Dave's head where it is. <laughs> There we go. So that's that's what's up then. So yeah. it's going to go on. So what's well, the thing? David, feeling? you've got to. Well, I mean, I'm sort of. Have we done the timer where people have to get their votes in? No, we, we, didn't didn't have have time. Time. we didn't have time, we time for that. Was it the end of the video oh, so last time? Yeah. So oh, we'll oh, there we go. So, oh, well, okay. Get your votes. Is it great or is it a gimmick? Uh, and obviously, you'll notice we engraved somebody on Rick's Tool Times little little plaque there, didn't we? We did. Yeah. Guy with the white beard. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah, yeah. already been immortalised in in Rick's uh, engraving on there. What can I say? Yeah. Here for posterity. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll have a go. Yeah, so people want to think, let's just see where we're going. Where are we going with it? So is it great or is it gimmick? Get in, because again, by leaving a comment gets you a chance for the register later on in the show. And if you're a regular commentator, you might find that you've got yourself in the end of the show credit roll. Yes. And there is some new names in there as well, so that is good. So what are we going with then, Gordon? I think it's, it's still, the audience think it's half and half, but it's, it's what do you think? Is it a great, if it's great, it goes at that end. If it's gimmick there, if it's middle of the range, you can put it in the middle. I personally quite like it. I think it's great. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd agree. Put it on the wall. Get, Get it up there, dynamite. dynamite. Oh. So it's going up. So we, we're going to bring this one in. Have we got it in? Okay, so here we go. Here? So, yeah, it's up to you. It's up to I'd you. say about, about there. Oh, yeah, that's good. Not quite a stripper, but it's good. We've had, some, we've had some choice words tonight. This is going to be an, it's going to be an amber warning, I think, from YouTube when we got there. Even Rick struggled uh, with his strut slayer so, uh, as we went through there. Yeah. Snazzy. And you've got the glasses on that come yeah. with it as well. Just Absolutely, yeah. Just in yeah. case. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't wear them for a while, so I've got one good eye left. But, um, uh, yeah, we're trying to salvage the one good eye with the glasses. Someone's put that out and don't stare at the laser beam with Move the remaining on. eye. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. God, and, uh, incredible. Would you slot them on and take them off after a minute or two? Right, so that's, that's gone on, on the wall then. So we're back into... Are we going to have a little bit more back into ventilation? We've got some we'll questions. We'll put that out as a full review. We've got some more uh, B-roll and stuff. We've got to do it. I think we're going to try and... Uh, engrave food. A biscuit. Yeah. yeah well, well, talking of biscuits, Alan, is there any left? <laughs> yeah, old Alan the biscuit muncher. That's what he's done today. Anyway, when you had to wait, you want to say, I might have been useless on the race wall three times, beyond belief. That's what you want to say, Larry, when you get back to work. Yep. Dave will say how amazing he was. I want to keep want these. To give, yeah, they're good. When you take them off, they're good. it's a good feeling when they come Under off. Under my John Lennon. Oh, but biscuit muncher in the corner over. That's all he did all day. Yeah. 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 Still here for the free beer. Market manager, yeah, so uh, all good. Yeah. So where, where would you like to take us now then, Gordon? Uh, I mean, we're back in with some questions. So the first one is from uh, from Eddie Clements. Now at the looks. So the, uh, Eddie Clements, who, that sounds familiar. That sounds like the sort of Efix person of the year Efix person of the year, so we all love Eddie. Yeah. Uh, and you haven't rang him back, have you? No, he, no. He rang today and Gary said, I'll ring him back later and he hasn't done. So I'll just, I'll just remind you there, Gary. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, back to Eddie's question. So he's worried, why can't you use soil pipe? for ventilation? What's the problem with soil um, pipe? It's soil pipe, the internal diameter is slightly 
less than a ventilation pipe because the the wall is thicker. Right. But it's also generally got ripples on the inside, and when it connects together, it also causes another ripple. So a tiny little ripple with inside a pipe. If you imagine the air hits it, it goes over, and again it gives you that ripple effect, and you're actually squashing the air movement in it, so it's more resistive. Right. Um, and also, soil pipe itself is generally a different size to the spigots on the heat re um, ventilation units. Right. And it, is it thicker wall as well? It's a thicker wall as well. Right. So, so like a bump in a pipe is like yeah. a speed bump for a car. It is, is it? yeah. Sort of... um, but if you imagine that as it goes over that, it creates that ripple which pushes all the air to the top. And but you've got that at both ends, so it's squashing the air into the middle. So you're reducing the actual air movement going through. And if you've got a couple of them through your pipe work, yeah. compared to a flexi. <laughs> well, compared to a flexi, from, compared to a flexi, it's better. But yeah. yes. <laughs> Keep going, Eddie. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, so someone else going into the uh, into the loft to remove yeah, the soil. Just, I mean, yeah, just yeah, <laughs> yeah. The matter better sense. soil pipe than flexible. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll have that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll go with that one. Yeah. So I mean, for us, you know, you're an electrician. You're doing a lot of new build work, and suddenly this whole house uh, heat recovery is going to start coming in more and more. Yes. Uh, obviously, I think I know the answer. But where do you go to get trained? Actually, if you, if you want to learn how to do it properly. Um, there's a lot of places out there, but there's a couple of recognised courses. So there are some official courses. Um, one of them you can be certified um, and join a competent person scheme, which is the way the whole industry is pushing everybody, oh, wow. um, which is the NICIC. They have training centres all over. EnviroVent are an approved uh, assessment centre for the NIC training. It's a two day course. Um, is that up here? That's you're in Harrogate, yes. So we can send Rick on that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Rick's on. Well Rick's, Rick, another that. course for Rick. <laughs> oh, yeah. ventilation, you're in, mate. Well, yeah, it's a two-day course. There is um, nearly five hours' worth of exams. But ah, not. lucky, Rick. Yeah. Um, and you do need to get 100%. But oh, you need to get 100%? You need to get 100%. Oh, yeah, there's no, no uh, pass or fail. He's been in the quiz team twice. He's um, won both times. 100%. Right. He's 100%, man. Yeah, 100%. That's all right, then. Um, but, yeah, there is other places if people are, are down south. There is some, some of our competitors or the NIC run the course as well. So, you know, you can, you can do it out there. Um, it is a lot of information to take in in two days. You're not going to learn everything, but it gives you that well, standard ground. Grounding, and you yeah. understand. We have to get all the questions the right. It's a lot of information to take. We've got to get them all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so let's say I'm going to delve into this. I've got a large project coming up. They're mentioning heat recovery and whole house ventilation. I'm probably going to need some help with the design, even yes. if I've passed that course. Where do I get the help with the design? Uh, Somewhere like environment would be the best place. Right. We have our own in-house design team. Um, okay. As I mentioned before, I head them up, but. That's going to cost a pretty penny, though, and it's going no, to No, we do the designs free of charge. Right. So we're, that, that's part of our service. We'll, we'll do the design. We can sort, support people on the install. So we've got our own installers out in the field as well. Um, right. They're all qualified electricians uh, doing the job day in and day out, um, fitting ventilation systems, doing the wiring. Um, but they'll also go out and we do toolbox talks. Okay. We'll do site visits. So we'll, you'll we'll hold your hand oversee, through the process? Yeah, all yeah. the way through the process wow. to make sure it's right. Okay, and, you, a lot of that. and again, everyone would have heard it. You, you mentioned it, it can be quite expensive, yeah. but if it is quite expensive, that means there's usually a pretty penny to be made on it, isn't it? You know, there, yeah. there, there's some money in it for the electrician. So if you're going to delve into this, well, maybe do the course and then obviously get it obviously designed a little bit of support going through. There is a reward at the end of it yeah, because this, is, this, this yeah. is not a, a £15 so item we're screwing to the wall, so is you're it? You're giving yourself um, a head start against your competition and our systems and heat recovery become more commonplace. Yeah those with more experience and, and the tickets to prove that they can do what they, what they say they, they can do um, against the competition gives themselves an edge. And there's more renewables being installed now by people. Um, I've got contractors that specialise purely in renewables. And for them, the heat recovery side is an add-on to the service they can offer to um, you know, yeah. somebody who's doing a self-built home. We've been saying this for a while in, in, the, in amongst our chats that we have, that if you only offer, let's go domestic, making it obviously, you know, your grid iron down lights, socket outlets, yeah. but I can do the odd USB one, you're actually, you're going to blink and your market's gone because yeah. people are going to go, if I'm going to refurbish my house by a new wiring system, I want all the bells and whistles, yeah, however much that costs, because yeah. I'm going to try and make my house a standalone generator heater in itself. And those people aren't offering, are they? They'll yeah. run out of work before they know it. Yep, yeah, and you know, we, we, you know, particularly yourself, guys, the amount of stuff that comes over your, um, your desk in the week, the, the new technology that's being pushed out in the industry is phenomenal now. And the way that the regulations are changing, um, you know, our regulations are very heavily um, geared towards what you can and can't do. They're going to be changing again in a couple of years' time and further again as we go towards a zero um, carbon economy. Yeah. 
um, and housing and, and the energy that we put into our housing is going to be a big part of it. You know, we know that gas boilers are on the, on the last legs um, in, in, in new builds. Um, they're already illegal in, uh, to be fitted into uh, social houses in Wales. So you, you've got to make sure that you are keeping yourself at least on pace, if not trying to get ahead of where, of where the marketplace is going. Yeah, we had a great question yeah. coming from Marcus, well, didn't we? Well, before that, yeah, we've had a super chat. Yeah. Oh, we? The lights changed. Oh, well, yeah, we've, yeah, had, we've had five pounds from Starburst, who actually said, uh, hope you're having all a great day. Can't believe you actually got me with the new cable, April Fool's, John. I, 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 you and 100,000 other people. Yeah, I think everybody who got caught out by that, you ought to chip a fiver in. This could be a very <laughs> profitable <laughs> evening, yeah? Oh, just yeah, submit yourself a fiver. So Marcus said, how much is the course? So if I want to come on this two-day course, obviously Rick's going on it. Yeah. Um, the course we, we do, it's the same course you get everywhere, but we only charge £200 because we don't make a profit out of it. That covers our yeah, that covers our costs for because we got paid a, an ICIC for the certification, the verification, uh, the staffing. We provide lunch, so that covers you know sort of the course. <laughs> Rick's even you'll, catered out at lunch. You'll find some yeah. places maybe around the £400 mark. I've got half price. So, yeah. you know, um, and then, as a sort of typical, how much, if, you, if you're looking at a typical house and it's gone full heat recovery, what sort of cost is that system for a house? Just a, uh, I don't think there is a standard cost yeah, because right. it's geared about the, the size of the house. Um, three bed semi. Yeah. Three bed and semi, you're probably looking at, what do you say, anything from three to four thousand, depends yeah. upon what, you, what you're actually We, we have had houses situation. three to four thousand, but we've had houses that have spent thirty thousand yeah. pounds on ventilation. Yeah. Right. But they've had three or four big heat recovery yeah, units. Yeah. Crack a window open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But as we all say to people, if there's a big ticket behind the kit, oh, the installation yeah. price has to be a yeah. reasonable chunk, yeah. otherwise it doesn't look right. Yeah. No. Does it? No, no, so no. I think it's a good oh, market. Right. And from what we've seen, on, when we've fitted, and we've still got some above us here, yeah. the old uh, semi flexible, was it semi flexible? Semi rigid. Semi rigid, yeah. semi -rigid yeah. to the way around. Yeah. It, is actually quite easy to install once you've got your head around it. Yeah. Oh, it's a doddle. Yeah. And I've got contractors who will only fit that stuff now um, because they, it saves them an absolute packet on, on labour. And as you know, labour is a massive part of any job these days. Yeah. So they can do the job in, what, certainly less than half the time. No, it's good. Yeah, we like that, don't we? When you, yeah, that means you're earning your money quicker. Yeah, exactly. job's still the same cost. Yeah. Just a lot of those, something that's the biggest, the mm -hmm. biggest thing, isn't it? Yeah, how long, how long is the job going to take? Yeah, really good point. So, any more comments in there that are jumping out at us? Well, Eddie reckons he's already certified, but obviously he's now got to go back and change all those soil pipes that's been used <laughs> in the past. <laughs> but it's better than flexi. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, it's flexi just so uninsulated flexi. Is that just the biggest no in ventilation? Yes, we, st we still use that, but it's only used in certain scenarios, and we normally use it, as David mentioned earlier, you use it when you connect a centralised unit onto yep. a rigid duct, because it gives you a ease for accessing the product or removing it at a yep. later date, because you imagine if you've got a rigid ducting fixed onto something, yep. to get that out of a cupboard or a wall, you can't get the ducting off. Okay, yep. If you've got a bit of flexi, it makes it easy to get out, but it also gives it an acoustic separation. So any mechanical unit that's got a motor in it it's moving it does create a bit of noise if that reverberates onto a rigid duct that would then act like a speaker and it'll increase the noise going down the ducting into that the room makes perfect so. sense doesn't it yeah. i think that's what we did with this system didn't we we had a piece of flexi didn't yeah. we, for the same yeah, reason. yeah we've done it we've recycled yeah. that in the other unit yeah, we have for, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come on to that later on because it's got a great application uh, that we're using it for yeah but, but when you say come on to that later you mean in the future yes yes, yes yeah, later today, we're not going to have a look in no, our no, toilets no, no we're not see no. where we've used it but uh, we've got that but it's yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, if I go back to, we did a, a smart home takeover and that house had uh, whole full heat yeah. recovery ventilation system in, I think the, 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 owner, the second owner of the house. It was a noisy system. Yep. So I'm already thinking in my head, uh, we can tell the ducting wasn't very good because we went past it on the floor. I think we stood on it yep. as we were installing the EV charger cable. So we probably didn't reconnect it properly. Yep. The filter's probably never been changed. Yeah, never been changed. <laughs> Will that make it noisy? <laughs> yeah, it can do, yeah, depending yeah, yeah. on the unit. Because again, cold. yeah, um, if the install's not good to start with or it hasn't been designed properly, the, the, the system specified correctly, what you'll have to do is make the unit work hard to achieve the airflows to comply with the building regulations. If you've got the unit working hard, always, we always specify a unit, a, a whole house unit, working at about 50% of its maximum. If you think of it as a car driving down the motorway, yeah. you don't want to be driving and foot flat to the floor 
you know, full revs because it's not good for the engine, it's not good for your fuel, not good for your tyres or anything like that. A ventilation system is the same. So we have it running at a steady 50% all the time and then it goes a little bit higher when you need to boost it. And we never go above the 80% mark um, when it's on its high speed. So there's a lot of special sort of calculations that are involved in specifying the correct unit and getting it working um, to the right standard, making sure it's not noisy. Again, within the regulations, there is regulations on how much noise a unit's allowed to yeah. Um, emit into the dwelling, whether it be a bedroom or a bathroom, you are limited to the amount of noise you can have in there, as well as the amount of energy consumption it can use. So it gets very complicated. Are we talking now meters for both, or is it just meters for airflow? Uh, so we've got to measure these things, and we can't yeah, just we've got to, yeah. the system, um, can we? Depend, normally, um, with a, a standard house, you just measure the airflows and make sure that. You've also got to measure the power consumption for a centralised unit to ensure that it's being energy, energy efficient. Oh, right. um, yeah. If you're doing something where you're doing something to a passive house standard, uh, you've then got to measure the noise levels as well because their noise levels are actually a little bit lower than the standard building regulations and you've got to prove that the unit is below those noise levels. Passive house, a lot of people might have just heard because of what's grand designs. Yeah. Your yeah. What is a passive design? That's my mate, Kevin. Have <laughs> <laughs> I gotten that trip out either? <laughs> Um, what is a passive yeah, house? Passive house, it's a, a, a German standard, which um, it's a, a really airtight house. So it's actually relying on the heat that you create through your everyday living, cooking, washing, ironing. You might have a ground source or air source heat pump, but they're limited to the amount of power you can use. They're built in a different way um, that a standard house is built. So basically they don't have a lot of natural leakage. They're very what we call airtight. Um, and they're really reliant on a heat recovery system. You can't have any other kind of ventilation in there because you need that air coming in and you need a balanced supply and extra. Yeah, you run out of fresh air. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I always sort of use a, a, a description to try and people understand. If you think if you had a colander with 100 holes in it, yeah. that is an old Victorian house. Fill it with water, the water comes out really quickly. Yeah. Fill 99% of them holes up, you've now got a modern airtight house. Fill it with water, it takes a very long time for that water to come out through that one hole. That's now your extract ventilation. Okay. It's reliant on all of that water going out. Right, okay. And, yeah. and that's what your ventilation is doing now when you've built an airtight house. Right. It's, it's responsible for all the air movement, which again is why you get a lot of even Victorian houses now. They've not had an issue for 50, 60, 70, 80 years, 100 years. As soon as somebody starts improving the, vent, the um, insulation on it, changing the windows from single glaze, double glaze, triple glazing, wall insulation, they suddenly get an issue with condensation and mould. Yeah. And it's because that little fan on the wall, or in line, that's not actually moving any air, yeah. you're more reliant on that doing its job and it's not. So mm -hmm. you've got to look at your ventilation. Then. Again, that's, that's another little gem that hopefully people have got out of this, because they're the little nuggets that the everyday electrician can probably have yeah. that moment. I remember when Larry said, yeah, that, yes. yeah, now that, oh, you've had all the insulation beefed up and now, well, yeah, it seems mm -hmm. too good to be true, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. just that simple well, passive thing. Passive house, Dave, you said, Obviously, Passive House sounds a bit grand designs, yeah. doesn't it? So immediately yeah. you're into millions, and uh, obviously it never gets finished, and the glass never turns. We've <laughs> all watched those ones. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, but you're saying that's coming in in Scotland, as we call it, Passive Hoose. <laughs> passive Hoose is quite a good description. Is that when the uh, MI yeah. came in at the same time? Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, oh, because all the nations work slightly differently, um, they, they all use the core part F as, as the base point. But in Scotland, they've, they've gone aspirational and they've decided they're going to go much more um, energy conscious and, and energy efficient uh, houses. Um, similar things are happening on a, on a lower scale in, in Wales. Um, there, are, there are a lot of housing associations now that are going down the passive house route, the, the true passive house route. Um, we see more um, inquiries coming through, more designs coming through from people who are building a one-off passive house. Um, so I'd say that it's not, it isn't like it was maybe 10 years ago where it was purely a grand design yeah. now it is becoming a little bit more mainstream there's a little bit more um knowledge and, and acceptance about it what's happening in regulation terms we're not going to stop it's going to happen um and i think the last 12 18 months particularly on the energy co uh, costs uh, front have proved to people that we can't continue like we're doing so if you're going to build a brand new house yourself and you may be bad at spending half a million plus maybe three quarters of a million to build a brand new house why would you not want to future-proof it if it's going to be your forever home? Mm. Yeah, if I'm a self-builder, yeah. yeah. Mainstream yeah. house builders. I mean, I pity yeah. the people who are buying a house today because yeah. 
you've got a gas boiler that's going to be in a few yeah, years. Obsolete time. in a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> really... All I've got out of that is the pay at environment is immense. No, 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 <laughs> Half a million, no, three quarters no, of a million pound house. Or maybe, maybe the house he's building. Yeah, but it's in sales. Why don't work in sales? Yeah, it's it's all Scotland all does stuff. tend to be more progressive. It, it has a different set of regulations or an enhanced set of regulations and has done since, what, about 2010 uh, when, the, when the, the last big change took place. Um, but that's driven a lot by the, the climate up there. Yeah. So in Scotland, they have a, um, a room within a new bill called a drying room um, because they can't always dry washing outside because it's, you know, it's cold and wet and, and, and such like. So there's a room that's dedicated for drying of clothes and, and, for, and for clothes in general, uh, wet weather gear, uh, it's ventilated. Right. And there, there's, and I don't have to go north of the border for, for, for my work, but there is a different set of regs that when we are getting quite, you know, is it, is it English regs, Scottish regs? Um, Scot English and Welsh regs are very, very similar, but the Scottish regs are completely different. And we, we need to know that when we're designing systems for yeah. them. Drawing yeah. room, I like that. Can that be the kitchen as well? Or is it a... it, no, it's a separate room, isn't That's it, Larry? No, yeah. ours is a separate room. Yeah. Right. And banister. That's yeah. another area. Yes. In, in England, yeah. the area which is the coast called Banister. All the radiators. Yeah, all the banisters. Yeah. They all, well, it doesn't do duvets. But in Scotland, they've also had air quality monitors in the houses. Yes, as well, yes. As well. Scotland, they've got to have a, an air quality mon monitor in every um, principal bedroom, every main yeah. bedroom. Because we, we, we did a project up there, and we were all working in this tightly tightly packed loft area yeah. change of lights and it went off the scale I mean, it was like yeah. you know yeah. was, i mean we People, hadn't even been out the night before it was, still, it was still saying there was bad it's, air quality all four of them on wood burns yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not just the the condensation and the mold it's it's the vocs the co2s everything you know we're breathing every day we're yeah. creating we? smells <laughs> yeah, yeah. the smells everything you know um vocs from candles plug-in air fresheners we all love them because they make the house smell nice it's the stuff that you can't really smell that's not good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's new furniture as well, isn't it? You new furniture. New and that's that newness smell. Newness, yep. carpets. Yeah, it looks, smells lovely, but it's not good for you. So you need to make sure the, the property is ventilated. Yeah. And obviously this is only going to get worse because we're sealing houses yeah, jammed yeah. tight to keep yeah, energy yeah. in. We're keeping all that, all those contaminants yeah. in. We call it a viral soup. If you could see it all, you probably wouldn't go in the house. Yeah, oh, there we go, viral soup now. We're already in, aren't we now? Yeah. We're, we're all experts on this tonight. We're going to be... <laughs> Throwing those... Yeah, yeah, just... Yeah. We don't want to create a viral soup. You know, you can imagine that. There's another 10 grand, in it? Yeah. To extract the fans. Yeah. Wow. There we go. So... Anything else you want to pull out of there? So thank you for the super chat. We must have had loads more since we've suggested it's £5 for everyone fooled on April Fool's. was a good one, though, wasn't it? It was a good one. We've already got plans for next year already, so they're afoot. Yeah. So we'll be off on there. Uh, did you do a course at North Shields? I think, well, North Shields to Harrogate. Surely you can travel that. It's an hour. Yeah, we, unfortunately, <laughs> the course, we have to do it at our, our head office. Yeah. Because we are, through the NICIC, they come and assess us every year. Um, as an assessment centre and we've, there's a lot of hoops we've got to jump through and, and um, stuff we, we need to follow so we can't take the course externally people have to come to us and, and do it but yeah. uh, as I say there, there are courses is it quite a practical course is it um, no it's, it's more more theory there is a bit of practical because you do have a practical test at the end of it where we will go through the commissioning of a whole house heat recovery system so you actually go with the more complicated system and how to commission it measure the airflows and set it up right what's the pass rate because it's 100 percent to pass what's yeah pass it's rate? generally quite good um i always i always say but most electricians plumbers joiners we can get through the course we have a lot of architects consultants building control come on the course as well because they want to gain a better understanding of the systems but we, we there's a few people fail but there's it's not a lot it's very low it's, you know. i do food work as well do you need any background knowledge no, 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 you don't require any background knowledge. I'll pass that one as well. Yeah. <laughs> it does help if you have it. We do generally try and send the, the coursework book out two weeks prior so you do get a bit of reading time beforehand. A lot of it is people will struggle with the terminology. Um, you know, we talk about free area, equivalent area, background ventilation, hold well in ventilation. Hold well in extract ventilation, which sound the same, and it's just, yeah, just yes. terminology. Terminology. Let's we'll move on quickly. Well, we're well, going to have a quick break for the register. <laughs> oh, register time. Yeah, Let's see if we've made the register. Um, right oh, he's not he's ready. Not oh, he's, he's, not he's got the mic. He's nearly there. He's, he's nearly there. Let's see who's in. Pegasus Electrical Control, Finley Hayes, of course. We've got Chief of 
Welcome now, Lucy Cockerline, Simon Price, Sean the Spark, the Flying Testing, uh, Matthew Boylan, Ryan Hewitt, Dazzy Man, Billy Torrey, Terry Moore, Cool DS, Oli, Mattery Eng, Nicky Sinop, Sam Spark in training, PDKH, Lay Winspear, Short Circuit, Matthew Boylan, our Daily Select Club, our Soul Trader, Marky D, Hal Nemoy, Danny B, Kevin Osborne, Mon Ahmed, Mark Allison, and East Power Engineers. Well, we made the prizes as well. So we had the GT earlier in David's time was 4 minutes 22. And we've got a serial winner. It is Richard Cockerell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he, he needs to be in there uh, in credit. Serial winner. I think you owe him some prizes yeah. anyway, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Five stickers for five different prizes. He'll get. Yeah. Well done. Thank you for playing along, even though you probably haven't had your prizes. We've been struggling with different things up here. Hopefully, it's about taking part as well as receiving a gift in the post. So, um, yeah, that was uh, really good. Serial yeah. winner. You didn't have your mic on. All right. Oh, there dear we go. me, every time now. Sorry, folks. Hopefully, you heard your name. And you did mention, so can you bring my hand cam in, please, folks? Can you bring hand cam in, Rick? Imagine you're on the cameras. Hello, Rick. Yeah, so as we look over there, you can see what we can see. There's uh, my wife and my son. So my son's been doing work experience with us this week. And my wife has been putting up with me coming home very late from work and falling asleep in the chair. So nothing's <laughs> new there. So thank you. Can we take the camera? Yeah, that would she asked me not... <laughs> <laughs> she asked me not to do Jenny. So Jenny's here, so Jenny's on sound. So let's bring up Jenny. So say hello, Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Jenny. You're right. So Jenny's checking our sound for us while we're here. So she's still with us, folks. We haven't got rid of her yet. So she hasn't got rid of us, I should suggest. She's putting on with us, but she doesn't want to be on camera, and that's why we haven't shown her this week. So thank you very much for that, Jenny. Oh, dear. Right, it's been good. Yeah. Did you spot good. a you spot a fake name in there? There was a there was an yeah. arsehole no, trader in there. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few names in there. I was more looking for if they are they all the people that are online. Uh, they're the people who've commented. Ah, uh, commented. Okay. Yeah, well, I expect yeah. some family members. No, no, well, I'm expecting my son is probably going to be watching. And when I heard the cool DS, I thought, that's the kind of name he'll put down. Oh, his we don't know DS, yeah. so. And I thought, is that him? He could be white. He won't have commented, I don't think. You know, I don't know. He'll be too busy. Oh, he's trying to get into his YouTube videos and oh, is he? things like that. Oh, should have brought yeah, him up with you. He'd love it, yeah, I tell you. Yeah. Would he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what sort of videos? He'd video probably be quicker on that wall than me as well. There's not many slower. There is one there. Where's it gone? Bless him. <laughs> so, what's his, what's his like to do on YouTube? Do we ask? Well, I, I don't ask. He just, he just enjoys. He, he wants to be a, one of these. I don't know what you call them now. Influencer, YouTube, influencer, oh, influencer. whatever you call it. Well, anything just on YouTube. Don't he's, know any of them. he's already um, faster on a computer and programming things. Than he's me. not cool DS, is he? Cool yeah. DS. Well, that's what I thought it could. I thought that yeah. sounds like the kind of name he'd yeah. put in there. We've got put that. a comment on if it is you, Dom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We've got that. We've got zombie paws. We've got uh, yeah. There's a <laughs> few uh, Hal Nemoy. We've got a few suspicious names in there tonight. But I think the one has got to be yeah. <laughs> I spotted <laughs> earlier on our soul trader. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to say for the algorithm, we've been really good for about four years and we had a disaster today, so no, Gary, please take it. Oh, uh, no, no, yeah, oh. no, don't keep saying oh, it! Are. Don't keep saying it! <laughs> yes, yes, okay, yeah, Rick slipped, we've slipped again there. Whatever next. Yeah, okay. So and everyone's uh, still telling us I'm lagging. They're, in, uh, they're, uh, they're just here in the shouts. Gary's an influencer. There you go. Yeah, was, yeah somebody who knows I hate that word. I think it's Joe. <laughs> Joe is... Oh, right, Joe. Robinson, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he knows I absolutely <laughs> detest that word. Anyone who sets out to do that is... I, I, I set out to help people learn stuff. What's that? A teacher, isn't it? Yeah. That's what I would suggest that one is. Right, so what we got? Any segments left? Do we burn through all our thing. segments? I think, so we're, uh, I think we're burned through our segments. Cool. So we we'll burned through the back of my clip. Oh, nice yeah, yeah. This morning. So we're done. We're done that. We're checking on that. We've got that. I think it's time to thank the sponsors again. If you want to bring them up for me, Rick. So people that help bring out the live stream every two weeks, we'd like to thank, and we'll go in reverse order, the wonderful people at Luden Palazzoli. We'd like to thank uh, Doncaster Cables, who we rang this week on Monday, and by nine o'clock had had four uh, requests for a new cable that was suggested was coming out on Saturday. We'd like to thank the lovely people at Marshall Tuflex. They had a great time when we came up here. I think they set the original bar of what guests should be, and I would suggest these two have almost been carbon copies of Barry and Martin when they came <laughs> to see us. You're the new Barry and Martin. Yeah? Sure Is okay. that a good Thing a bad thing. Well, the, the electrician in those two was Barry and he was slower than Martin, he'd never seen a screwdriver, a lot of similarities. Oh, yep. And the great people at the Laseco Group, we'd like to thank them for their support so we can bring this to you every two weeks. So thank you very much for those industry supporters. Mm -hmm. And thanks to our guests. I mean, so we, we've, 
Yeah, I think, I think learn. Yeah. yeah, as I say, yeah. there'll be a lot of people looking under floors and in lofts. There'll be yeah, semi-experts and hopefully be uh, yeah. And, and, and like the level of learning, it's something you can consume because you you've yeah. probably done it. You've probably made the mistakes we've talked about, but you didn't know you were making mistakes. I don't think anyone laid that no, flexi dog. Nobody's, nobody's yeah. taught. We set out to make so, a mistake. No. No. Yeah, so uh, hopefully moving forward, people will be encouraged maybe to do the course, even though you've put them off with your hundred percent pass rate. And obviously, yeah, they'll, they'll, be, all right. they'll be all right. But if I got, if I, if I was fitting some of your stuff and I got a snag and, and that, we've got a helpline. Or yeah, yeah. You always. I mean, in Vivent, we have a technical support team. So if you phone up the, the, the main office number, um, the option four for technical support, they will talk you through whether it's anything about regulations. It could be something to do with a ventilation, installation of a product, setting up of a product, fire regulations for because obviously, again, ventilation um, has a lot of. Uh, do I need to be a member to do that? Uh, no. Do I need to be registered with you to do no. that? No. Do you want to just ring you up? You can just ring us up. And we even have people ring us up and they're not installing our products and we'll try and... We, we won't advise them about somebody else's product, but, you know, it's only after the conversation of half an hour of discussing something with them and they say, oh, well, it's not your product. It's, that's what it is. We, it's trying to educate the world. It's a bit like confession, is it? Yeah. Sort of yeah. Yeah. It's good for the soul. Good, good for the soul. soul. I've used yeah. soil pipe. Yeah. I've, used, I've overdone it. I've overdone it this week. I've overdone it on the flex. <laughs> is that you, Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's great then. So some, some gems there, innit? So we've had some nuggets tonight on the information you give us that can take away and in instantly implement. We've got a help desk that we can ring at any time during normal working hours. Normal working hours, yeah. yeah and no, obviously we've got that course that's half the price of anyone else as long as we come up to Harrogate in order to do it. And if you do come up to Harrogate in order to do it, then obviously you can obviously book yourself a visit and come and see us. Yeah. We'd like it post the training, wouldn't we? So we can uh, obviously uh, yeah, yes. get a little feel for it. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah so that'd be good if anyone's doing that course, get in touch. Yeah, please do. Yeah, and on that bombshell, we've just got one last thing to say. In two weeks' time, we have got the people from Basic here. Now, obviously, on the back of our cable, April Fool, we've got lots to talk about with Basic. And I would just like to point out, the Irish cable I did use, which I've got a little bit there next to you there, Larry, is actually Basic approved. Okay, I'm sure there's lots of jokes there with the cable approval in Ireland, but yeah, it is a proper Basic approved cable. Yeah, so, well, uh, yeah. Does that mean we might app. be wifting along YY cable and SY flex? We're explore, uh, yeah, Basic. So I was quite surprised to see a Basic approval on a cable that you can't use here. Right. Yeah because it's made to an Irish standard and there's a big problem using standards that aren't recognised over here. You can use Harmonise stuff, but we'll not delve in. And obviously the YY cable, it's, it's a bit like the flexi duct of the electrical industry. Mm. Uh, it, it used often, probably in the wrong applications, I would yeah, say. I would agree with that. And then does that link to maybe uh, EV Ultra and maybe how they managed to get a data cable embedded inside a mains voltage yeah, cable, we'll, band one, we'll, band two? We'll, we'll dig into all that. And, it's good. Uh, and does that mean we've got Aaron back as well? That means we have got Aaron back as well. So, uh, yeah, so he's yeah. finished answering his helpline on a cable that doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> so thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you back in two weeks. We'd like to thank Dynamite Dave and Lightning Larry for bringing us such a fantastic race wall and the knowledge that we didn't much. have before. So thank That's you very much. I'm going off to climb through lofts to correct all my mistakes. See you in two weeks. Thank you.